Okay, so let's look at integrity example. So I'm going to do a little magic trick for you. And this is called parity. And here uh, you can see I have these green and black robots. But I want you to imagine, instead of looking at them as green and black robots, I want you to imagine this is binary code that's being sent from one place to another. And here the, the greens maybe represent ones, and the black robots represent zeros. So this would be the binary stream 101010, whereas this would be the binary stream 011010, like that. You get the idea, right? So I'm sending this binary stream from here to somewhere far away, and then they're, they're getting it here. I want you to imagine that something might, on rare occasions, happen to one of these bits where maybe it hits hit with a cosmic ray or there's some kind of power surge that causes one of these bits, let's say this one, for example, to suddenly change. So compared to the way it was sent at the receiving end, there's an error now. See that? There's an error. And the question is, is there any way that the receiving end can tell that there's an error and even more amazingly can fix the error without having to contact the transmitter originally? And it turns out that if we hash this using something called a parity scheme, we can actually accomplish that. I'm going to prove that to you right now. So this shuffle button creates a random list of uh, data, right? And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to select one of you to come up here and flip one of these robots over. I'll shuffle these. And uh, I'll pick one student at random here so you won't think that I set this up. Oh, there's nobody here. Uh, OK. Uh, Mr. Nikita, you're my random student, sir. Let's see here. Where'd it go? Sir, I'm going to go outside. I want you to flip just one robot. Just touch it, OK? And then go back to your seat. You all done, sir? OK, have a seat. Now, pretend that I've received these bits at the far end, right? So I've received these bits, and I'm trying to figure out which row and which column are having their issue. And uh, I can already tell that the problem is in this row. And uh, let's see here. Uh, I think it's this robot right here. Yeah. Is that right? Yes. OK. So the reason I was able to detect that is that these bits are hashed. And the hashing, if you can't tell, these bits over here and these bits over here are not part of the payload. They're special bits that have been added to the data set because they provide parity. And what's happening here, we're using odd parity. You can see we're using odd parity here. And what's happening is that these bits have been carefully selected so that there is an odd number of green robots in every row and every column. So here, for example, you can see that there are five green robots. Let me shuffle this again. You can see there's one green robot, three, three, one, three, three. Likewise, if you go down, you can see that the number of green robots is always odd. So if a, ro a robot gets flipped like this, what will happen is that that row and that column will now have an even number of green robots, which allows the far end to detect single bit errors and fix them without getting help from the transmitting end. So this is another example of hashing. Now, this type of hashing is called parity. We're going to discuss a different kind of hashing that's a slightly more sophisticated version of this called cyclic redundancy checks, CRC. You might have seen that somewhere in your coding. Has Mr. Uh, Dr. Uh, Kazanchi covered this or no? No? OK. Uh, and th there's also another simpler thing called a checksum. And we will discuss both of the. Has he talked about the checksums? All right. So basically, these are two things we have to discuss. Yes, sir. Is it a checksum that's MD5 hashing? Uh, or is it, is it I, I don't know the MD structures, but we'll do a simple example of 8 bit checksums and 8 bit CRCs to show you how they are calculated and how they work. Yes. So how would this be different with, if it wasn't an odd parity? Like so if you want to do even parity, you can see here now all the robots have an even number of green. Okay. It turns out that odd parity has a slight advantage over even parity. And the, and the reason why, sir, is if I pull the plug, 
if I pull the plug and I send all zeros, if I send all zeros, even parity will make it look like there are no errors. Mm -hmm. But odd parity will detect that as an error, and so the loss of power is easier to detect with odd parity rather than even parity, so odd parity is more often used. So three hashing schemes for ensuring the integrity of the data. See that, right? Yes? We just don't really deal well with multiple errors. Okay. So now, no one can really fix multiple errors, Mila, because if you have like seven or eight errors, there's just not much you can do. <laughs>